The text tool allows us to create text elements on the stage. This lesson describes the use of the text tool and demonstrates a few common usages. So here we have just a blank Flash Professional project. And I'm going to go over to the toolbar here and select our text tool. So immediately I get a few different options. I can choose between classic text or TLF text. TLF stands for Text Layout Framework. And Text Layout Framework is a lot heavier as far as file size goes, but it also gives us a lot more control. If I switch to TLF, you'll actually see that I have a lot of additional properties here than I did in Classic Text. Going back to Classic Text, we can see not so many properties, but that's okay for a lot of usages. We can choose between static text, dynamic text, and input text. The differences here are that static text is text that cannot be manipulated once the actual Flash movie has been compiled, whereas dynamic text can be changed through ActionScript, so you can change what sort of characters are displayed in the text and so forth. You can output additional characters and it's good for giving users messages and so forth. Then we have input text. And input text is similar to dynamic text. It can be used with ActionScript. However, input text is meant to represent sort of like a text input that you might be familiar with through HTML. So it renders the text with a little box around it and so forth. So let's see the differences between these. Here we have static text. And I'm going to have to change the color on this. And I'll change it to white. And maybe bring down that size a little bit. The text tool is always going to retain the settings from when we last used the text tool. So obviously the last time I used it, I was using very large text. And now I just need to adjust for that. So there's static text. Let's create another text field. And this will be dynamic text. And then we'll create yet another to represent input text. So we can notice that static text itself does not have an instance name field here. So we cannot give it an instance name. Therefore, we cannot actually go in and change the properties of this text through ActionScript. For dynamic text, we see we do have an instance name. So we could call this alert message or something like that. And then in ActionScript, we can then change the content of this particular text field. We're able to do that with dynamic text. However, when you're using dynamic text, you have to make sure that the characters that you want are all embedded. So inside of this character dropdown here, we can choose a font family, a style, and we can also set font embedding options. If I click this, we get the font embedding dialog, and we already have a font right here, but we can actually go through and give this a specific name if we want to, or it'll just name it for us, font1, font2, and so forth. Here's the important bit. We're able to actually specify character ranges here. So if I want to put all the characters in, I can just check this box. And this will make it so whenever anybody types anything on the screen or whenever there's feedback that comes out through this particular text field, that these characters will actually be supported. They'll be compiled along with our Swift. If we don't do this, then the user will have to have this specific font on their machine, which we can't always count on that happening. So maybe I'll choose to do numerals, lowercase, uppercase, and I can also include some punctuation characters if I want in addition to that by just popping them right in here. So we'll have A to Z in caps, A to Z lowercase, 0 to 9 in numerals, and these specific characters. So hit OK, and that will actually embed all those for us when we compile our Swift.
And again, it's only dynamic and input text that you really have to worry about embedding characters. For static text, it's going to simply embed all the text as outlines when we output. So no problems there. Input text can also get an instance name. And as I mentioned, the only real difference between input text and dynamic text is that we can actually use this as sort of a input field. So for instance, if I go in here and I can turn on the border and change the color of this text. So if we go and control test movie, we can see how this works. So static isn't going to allow me to edit it. Dynamic isn't going to allow me to edit it. Although I can do things through ActionScript to change this text field. However, input text will allow me to actually go in as a user and edit that text. So those are the main differences between these three text types. Going down through the list of properties here, for classic text you have the normal position and size, so x, y, width, and height of the text field. We have our character settings, which we've seen most of these already. We can choose the font family, the style, so normally it'll be regular, bold, italic, and so forth. We can choose the font size and points, the spacing, the particular color, whether we want to auto kern, a number of different anti-alias settings, and then we have things such as making text selectable or not, rendering text as HTML, showing the border around the text, just like we have with our input field. We can do superscript and subscript on specific characters. And in our paragraph options, we can choose left alignment, center alignment, right alignment, or justification. We can also choose paragraph spacing. So this is spacing before the paragraph, spacing of each line, right margin, and left margin. We can also put a link in here if we want to. And that way, somebody clicks on it, they're able to go to another web page. And we also can apply filters to our text if we want to, such as drop shadow, glow, and so forth. Popping back up here to classic text, let's turn on TLF text. So here we can see that there's actually a whole lot of other stuff that we can deal with when using TLF text. The TLF text engine actually comes to us from InDesign. InDesign is Adobe's creative layout program. So that program is very specific and robust around its use of typography. We can now have that level of control within Flash Professional if we choose to use TLF text. So we have the normal position and size. We also have 3D position and view. So we have control over the camera perspective, the vanishing point X and Y. The character settings are just about the same, except we've also got things such as highlighting. We've got different types of rotation and also whether to do underline, strike through, as well as super and subscript. We have advanced character settings. So here again is a link. We can specify a link URL, but we've also got all of these things. So specifying that everything is going to be uppercase, lowercase, caps, small caps, and so forth, and all of these different settings. It would take a while to go through all of these. You can even specify exactly what language this is in. So you can see as we're going through here, this is very, very robust. Paragraph settings are mostly the same. They're a bit different. You've got better control over justification and so forth. Container and flow, you can have single line, multi-line, or multi-line no wrap. You have column settings. So something that TLF can do is it can actually spread across various columns. So if you need to do stuff like that, this is what you would want to use. You wouldn't want to use a normal classic text field. So a few other things. We have color effects that we can use on this, such as brightness, tint, advanced, and alpha. We also have display settings where we can choose the blend mode and how to render it. Do we render it as it is or do we cache it as a bitmap? 
Cache's bitmap would probably be most useful if targeting mobile devices, since mobile devices seem to work better with pre-rendered bitmaps. And we also have filter, and this works exactly the same as filters do on a normal classic text field. So this has been an overview of using the text tool in Flash Professional and a lot of the properties that are involved in text fields that are created with the text tool.